afternoon lovely friends how are you all thank you for joining me today in studio it's the same line i open with it every time i need to really um change my opening line if you've got any ideas tell me how to change it good afternoon i hope you will anyway regardless my name is tony derrick and i'm a guest presenter over on create and craft and i love anything to do with crafting so that may be in the form of some stamping some coloring some die cutting just playing and i know that's why you're tuning in every time to see what we're doing and hopefully i can inspire you in one way or another to either pick up a brush do some die cutting anything so that's why i'm here not only for you for myself too because this is probably the only time i get to play so welcome to the channel everybody hi marilyn lynn heather bernadette rio hi may adele doreen enid joan tracy joe may everybody's there all the lovely faces it's lovely to see you all happy monday morning joe patty now you're feeling blue oh i am feeling blue today yes it's another inexpensive purchase which i absolutely love all of this i love anything uplifting motivational as you all know and um, so i've got and guess what all my design team have got them as well yeah happy post for my design team they've all got their lovely jumpers too so we're all sharing the love should we say so thank you for that in today's studio we are going to do our last academy stamp oh dear oh sends a shiver down me actually that because it's been such a journey hasn't it so it's this lovely stamp here watercolor magic so it's the one where we've got the lovely watercolour flowers, the solid portion on there. Show you there, look at those, absolutely stunning. And we're going to be a little bit creative with this one. It's the last one in the Academy range and we're going to do a lot of different things using this one, I think. Today we're going to push the boat out and be just that little bit more creative. Can we be more creative? We'll try. We will try. So before I actually get into the craft element of it, I've got a couple of things that I would like to tell you all about. Firstly, I just need to do the administration side of things, which I know you all hear me say every single time, but we do have new viewers. So if you are on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if you do see that little HD button, that may improve your viewing experience. Don't forget to click the like button. And then after the show, if you would, uh, pop a comment below the video and this enables us to get a wider reach with our videos and I know you're all enjoying the videos because they are getting watched so many times now which is absolutely fabulous and we are growing and we are growing nicely we're not running away with ourselves it's just growing lovely the family is sharing uh, caring and sharing and it's just growing and it's absolutely fabulous so I just want to talk about a couple of things then so we have our eight year anniversary over on create and craft and we're celebrating it so we've been there eight years and we've never actually celebrated any of our birthdays so eight year anniversary and we to show you what's in the show i'm going to be doing a facebook live if you have a pen and a reminder i'm going to be doing a facebook live on wednesday at 1 pm showing you the brand new products in the shows now obviously i will show you all of the products but be um, mindful that they are being launched on separate days over on Create and Craft. We're celebrating you every single day for three days, okay? And the reason it's gone to three from four is because it's my son's birthday. So we've managed to um, sort it out so we can celebrate Tom's sixth birthday on Friday, which is going to be fab. I am excited about that one too. Six years, where has that gone? I am not having any more. No way. But that's another story. So eight years over on Create and Craft and we are live on Create and Craft on Thursday. Now, I think the times keep changing, so I'm not going to tell you a time as of yet because it becomes confusing. So until I absolutely know the time, um, we will just leave it as Thursday for now. So Thursday I'm on for a few hours. I don't know when. And then um, Saturday we have a pick of the day with brand new products and then Sunday we have live hours with new products. So it's going to be super fabulous. Um, I do appreciate your support and even if you're not buying, please tune in. It's going to be a lovely experience for me and an inspirational experience for you, hopefully. We're going to have a cake and some balloons and it's going to be just a lovely few hours where we focus on stamps by me. Um, and what we've achieved, which is super, super cool. So that's that. Um, 
Also, if you purchase anything within the event, what I've done is I've put a giveaway together on Create and Craft. I delivered it to Create and Craft on Saturday. And basically, if you purchase anything, whether it be one item, two items, three items, whatever you purchase, you will be entered into a prize draw for uh, a bundle of Stamps By Me products to the value of £700. How excited! £700! That's so cool. And whoever gets it, I need to know about it. I need to know about it and what you're going to do with it all. So that's that. And then... Um, and then what I was going to do is I wanted to celebrate it in our Eureka fan page also because I know a lot of you are in our Eureka fan page and you're all there because you support me as a brand but you're also there because you've got lots of friends and you've got lots of people that inspire you in there, each other, you know, you see people in there that inspire you as people at home and I see people in there that inspire me too. So um, rather than just keep giving away things, albeit it's fabulous for you guys at home, I thought I'd do something a little bit different this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to celebrate, because we've been um, eight years live on Create and Craft TV, every single day from Monday next week, I'm going to pop a post on our Eureka fan page of one person that's inspired me out of that group. Um, and that person is going to get a little treat from me and it's not going to be a stamp and it's not going to be a die it's just going to be a little card of some form and i'm just going to put why that person's inspired me so if you've been posting your makes or even it doesn't have to be pictures of your makes if it's, if it's been a comment or something which i've witnessed or seen you say or do or if you've helped somebody else i'm going to tell you eight people from monday who how, who i felt have inspired somebody else or me and I hope that's okay, and I hope I don't, want to, um, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I appreciate that you all inspire one another, but I do want you to know that you guys do inspire me too, and I'm going to tell you who inspires me. And I just think it's a little bit of a touch, and if I can send you a little card to say thank you, then that's what I'm going to do. So from Monday, keep your eyes on the Eureka fan page posts. I have all the names already, and I have already pre-written a little paragraph about that person and um, those people will be getting a little something through the post from me and it's just giving back again but I don't want to keep sending stamps and dies and free things and asking you to subscribe and asking you to care and share and you know it's just something a little bit different because I really never get a chance to express to these people personally I do comment but not personally so I hope that's okay and not forgetting after all this is over we have our Craft Academy, there's so much to say, isn't there? Our Craft Academy um, launching here for the closure of the 12 week of lockdown. And you've all been sending me fabulous cards and gifts and things, excuse me, and things that you've made and letters and essays. <laughs> and they're just over there. And um, so we have that at half past four on Saturday, the 25th. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a lot of the makes. We're going to do some video footage, some filming, so your cards will be aired in the studio. And we're going to read a few of the cards out too. And I have a little surprise for you all on the 25th too. So you need to make sure you tune in for that one. I just The reason why I said that is because I, when I was sat here waiting for to go live, I was reading through the fabulous comments and I saw May, May Hume, had popped on. It's going to be a very emotional studio. So I quickly wrote your name down, Mayhem, so thank you for that. And it is, it is going to be an emotional time, don't you think? Because, well, it's been emotional for me every day. I get these cards every day and I read them every day. Probably I cry every day. <laughs> so you can imagine what the studio is going to be like. I'm not going to read them all or else we will be here for a week. But whoever has sent me a card, if I do or do not read it out, you'll need to be super proud of yourself, guys. You really do. 12 weeks has been so tough. Some people are still in lockdown. I still haven't ventured out properly yet. Um, but we did it. We did it. And we're going to come out the other end of it. Bigger, better crafters. Bigger, better people too. So thank you so much. I'm so excited about it. And if you want to show your family and friends the cards, they will have an appearance in show. So you will be able to go back and show your family your lovely makes. So I've got to save all my tears for my watercolour in. Thank you, Joe. Joe. Thank you for the, um, the surprise this morning, Joe, for studio. Beautiful. 
Can't wait, can't wait. Oh, please don't cry, don't make, oh, let, let's leave it there, shall we? We'll see what happens. I'll have my big roll of tissue, this big, you know, the big blue one, <laughs> to keep me going. So we'll be okay, we will be fine. So let's do some crafting, shall we? So that's what we've come to do. So I'm gonna be using this lovely um, watercolor stamp here. However, as always with Studio, you do not have to have the products, dig in your stash, see what you've got. This technique I'm gonna do will work beautifully with an outline stamp too. So have a look at what you've got in your stash. I've had it, Joe. thank you very much. Super lovely. So I'm just gonna move this over because it's scratching me, um, sorry, quite nastily. It's a bit painful, there we go, that's a bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two cards and we're gonna do like the backgrounds together and then the foregrounds together and then we're gonna do some envelope decorating too, which I thought would be quite cool. Um, there's nothing else on my list, I can pop my list away and let's craft. There's nothing else to tell you about. Have you got your cup of tea or your cup of coffee ready? I hope so. So first of all, I have two pieces of white cardstock. Now what we'll do is, there we go. So what I'll do, what we'll do is we will create the like top element of our card first and we're going to do it in two different colour waves. So I'm just going to grab my um, Eureka and my cardstock. What we're going to do is we're going to do a monochromatic card, maybe black and white. It might turn out to be grey and white, grey, black and white. And we're going to do a beautiful, beautiful, bright and breezy coloured one too. So first of all, I'm going to pop the large piece into here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the stamp. Uh, it doesn't matter which you use. So if you are crafting along, you can use any you want to use. And we'll pop a few of these down. So I'm just covering, obviously, this panel. So let's go with that one. I'm trying to be a bit loose with where I'm popping them. Oh, that's another thing on my list as well. Um, I have a, let's have a look. Just one second, I have something else on my list that I've missed there. Happy birthday, Carol. Is that right? Did I get the name right? I hope so. Be awfully rude if I haven't got the name right. I think it's Carol. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm sure you are having a lovely day, hopefully. So I've got the three stamps on there, look, just place them face down. Just a little bit sporadic there, no, no positioning really, nothing fancy. So what I'm gonna do, they are brand new stamps, so they're sticky, there we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do our uh, monochromatic card first. And I'm going to use this grey ink pad. If it doesn't show up very well, I'll go over it with the black. So let's get some colour on here. So I'm just going to rub this ink pad on here. And hopefully we'll have like a lovely shadow of some roses and some leaves. And I'm using a 5 by 7 card top folding note card so I'm using the ones that we've just popped on the website I've loaded black and white onto the website I'll just show you so um, the black five by seven and the great thing about these black ones is they come with a beautiful coordinating black envelope and they fit so snug inside that envelope so you know you're going to get a beautiful card and envelope there so there's black and there's white on there five by seven in the coming packs of 30. So let's stamp this one out. So it looks, might get a little bit of texture on here because I am actually using a um, memento. So I'm not going to get the crispest of images, but I'm just going to maybe repeat stamp it two or three times to get that nice crisp image. So I'll take it off carefully. That looks like posh wallpaper, doesn't it? So I'm going to do it again.
like so. So I'm going to absolutely leave that one there. I'm going to take this one out, just set it aside for a second. And I'm just going to bring, this is the second card, but it, the second one's going to have a smaller panel. But if you're crafting along, you can keep the panels the same size. This large panel is six by four, six by four. So if you're wanting to do the same as me, just do two panels the same. This one's a little bit smaller and I don't think I intended on it being smaller, but it is. So I'm going with it. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to clean off this stamp, take that ink off there. And now we're going to have a coloured panel. So let's pop it in there and then let's go with, let's reposition. So I'd like um, a nice, as much colour as we can on this card. So I'm going to go that one there. Try and get this one up here. And then shall we use the other little one with the little leaves on? And we'll just fill in this little space look with this little leaf if we can get it on there. Just get it on. See if I can get my magnet in when I'm on. There we go. Well, let's go with that one. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to use our ink pads. So I've just got my little, little ink pads here. So you can use whatever ink pads you've got in your stash. I am going to spray with a little bit of water to give it a bit of a watercolour look, but not, I'm not going to go heavy. So in this sense, you could look at them as being a little bit like your lamination stamps with the solid portion. And I know you're all super enjoying those lamination stamps. You really are, which is fab. So let's go abandoned corals. So I'm going to do the um, heads of the flowers first. Let's have a look. No, that one's not even on the card. So let's just go like so. And then let's get some green on there. Now, I am not precious about where the colours go. Where the colours go and if they bleed into each other I like that effect if you don't like that effect clean the colour off the rest of the stamp so I'm just going in with the green here and I'm just using white cardstock I'm not using watercolour card today just white cardstock so you can see the pretty images there on the on the door I'm just going to give them a really light mist, really light, not nothing heavy. So I should, because I haven't saturated it with the water, I should get a little bit of texture in there. I've missed that leaf there, I'm going to have to add some green on there. And you get this beautiful, there's the green there, and then you get this beautiful sort of texturized backing piece of paper really and the less water you add the more texture and if you're wanting a smooth finish then just um, add a little bit more water so shall we add a little bit of let's add a little bit of yellow into those into the heads of the flowers so I'm just going to pop a little bit of yellow in some of the areas and then we'll get a hint of yellow in those little pretty coral roses when you start adding the two colours that's where you get a little bit of a realistic look of dimension there we go so let's just have a look what's going on here it's a bit too texturized let's just spray a little bit up here there we go so let's clean this area off so you can see pretty much straight away if you use it with a solid colour you get this beautiful like solid which looks like pretty paper or you do get a realistic watercolour look if you spritz it with a little bit of water so it's like the, the effects with these sort of stamps are truly incredible the different effects more to the point um, 
and as we do with our lamination stamps, and we may do it over the course of the next three days, but if we stamped out in a light colour and stamped on and then painted in the detail ourselves, that's equally as beautiful. And we are going to pick up a fine line of pen in the next three days and add some detail to these ourselves. So you need a fine line of pen for studio, just a black one, nothing fancy. So let's just dry these two off and make sure they are absolutely dry. So Roseanne, when I use the sinks, I just get a few beads of ink on the stamp after they start numerous times. Are you spraying with water, Roseanne? Yeah, and like Anne says there, is your ink pad a little bit dry, sweetheart? It could be many, many things, to be honest. So the card, Janet, the size of the card is five by seven. It's a top folding. So Doreen, the cottage stamp in my traditional Christmas has been lost in the post. Very disappointing. I may have to have, have a refund. It should be coming to you, Doreen. Oh, I don't know whether you should have had it or not. Do you want to um, send a message at info at stamps by me? So we can check it for you. There'll be a tracking number. We'll be able to check it for you. See if somebody signed for it or something like that. Tony, will you show the new products? Yeah, so I'll be in studio on Wednesday at three and I always give a brief overview for the people that are not on Facebook. I always do it twice. Albeit the second time round, I don't go into as much detail, but you still get to see the products um, as a whole entity, I go through them all. So yes, you will still be able to see them, sweetheart. I hope that's okay. Gail, that's for that lovely lady, Gail. Roseanne, Roseanne, I haven't had mine yet. They are coming, they are coming. We have sent them. Are you talking about the ones from Create and Craft or the ones from us? Can somebody tell me? Because um, I can't obviously comment on when Create and, Cra Create and Craft are gonna get theirs out the door. Um, if you're waiting from Creating Craft and it, it was meant to be in your bundle and it was to follow, they have got them, so fingers crossed they'll be out the door imminently. So I'm sure they're doing the best. So let's make this card. So I have two pieces of black card and I'm just going to mount these onto two, onto obviously mat and layer. So it's just black card and all I've done is I've created a small border to mount this onto. So I'm just going to use my tape pen. So at the moment, all we've done is we've stamped out the lovely image, haven't we? Or oh, we've added a bit of water to some colour and we're just creating a matte and layer here. So that's all we've done so far. So if, you, if you're late to the class, if you want to call it a class, uh, don't worry, you've not missed much at all. And you can see how gorgeous your images look as soon as you mount them. So make sure you always see the card through to the end. They look so different. And let me tell you, there's been many a time when I've been in studio and I do have a vision, I have an idea, and I've been halfway through the idea and I've been thinking, this isn't really what I planned. But when I've mounted it, I've been absolutely um, chuffed with it. So do, do stick it out. So the pens are not in the CNC show for birthday, unfortunately. And this smaller card is five by three and a half. So I've got two sizes going on there. This was meant to be the same size as this. Do you know what? <laughs> what was I thinking? I must have been distracted. I'll tell you a little funny story as well. I know you love my stories, not. Um, I walked into studio with my kit today and I, <laughs> I knocked one at lights all over. The big tall lights, they're so tall. I knocked it over and I nearly took Nathan's head off and he was listening to some backing music for one of our videos and thank goodness it wasn't loud because it missed, it just went 
Nathan just managed to catch it before it took his ear off. <laughs> like, oh my God, oh my God, are you all right, are you all right? So he nearly got sunburned and he nearly lost an ear <laughs> this morning. Uh, that's because he's had a new haircut, you see. Anyway, but yeah, I'm like, oh, it's funny now, but at the time I'm like, catch it, catch it. <laughs> right, so I have my, let's, put these aside for now so there are lovely toppers and we're creating two cards remember so there are lovely toppers so here we have a piece of black card and a piece of white and these are just matte and layers that are going to go on top of my five by seven card blank so this is a five by seven top folding black and this is a top folding in white okay so let's just set the cards aside and these are obviously the matte and layers these pieces here can we see that there? So let's just set these aside. Just make sure I know what I'm talking about before I go and ruin the project. So this time we've done our two toppers and this time we're going to do our two pieces of backing card. So we're going to create a decorative background here. Okay, so first of all, with this one, I'm going to put a nice black something on here and it's going to be a stripe. Now you're thinking, where is she going with this? So I'm just going to grab my watercolour. If you've got a black ink pad, you can drag a black ink pad, um, you know, pop it on your mat and get your paintbrush and pick it up if you want to. But I'm just going to use this because I haven't got my water-based water ink pad in my minis. So I'll just get some water here. So let's activate this black. I'm just mixing some black on my palette here, as you can see. And all we're going to do is we're going to put a nice... And I'm going to go freehand because I like the freehand look. But if you don't like to have free freehand, if you've got a stripey stamp that can do the lines, then you are good to go. Got my Create and Craft Air Mala stamp today. Wow, that was quick. Isn't it strange how sometimes they're really quick and sometimes you're like, oh, pulling your hair out. Well done, Creating Craft. So all I'm going to do is just pop a stripe straight across here. And I'm just going to go random. I'm not even trying to be overly straight, over... Trying to get it roughly the same width apart, but if it's not, it doesn't matter. see that there so there's my stripe so let's just set that aside just move that to one side so that's just you don't have to do black stripes you can absolutely do any colors you want to now I did want to do some lovely black stripes some lovely stripes onto black card but you're quite limited aren't you in the sense that it's black and nothing much shows you have got a white in your watercolors but it practically disappears to nothing it's watercolor however acrylic and gouache show really really well but I just want to show you maybe a, a, a technique or alternative ways of using your stash. Do you would, so I'm going to use a white ink pad. But again, if you don't have a white ink pad, use your gouache, your acrylics. What else could you use? White embossing lines, maybe. There's quite a few things you could use. So I'm just going to use this one that I've got in my stash. I haven't actually hardly used it, if I'm completely honest. So pigment ink in black, glacier white opaque ink acid free non-toxic so i'm going to give this one a whirl but what i'm going to do is rather than do the traditional like pen lines i'm just going to do a scrape from top to bottom like so press on a little bit hard and hopefully get some color on there so i'm just going to maybe do let's shall we just go with three because that's my pad i haven't got that much more space so let's just So I'm hoping that's going to show a little bit better. Just give it a second or two to dry. Let's try it off with my gun. Okay, Sheila, see you later. Happy birthday, Sheila's husband. So 
So let's try and make it a little bit darker. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm happy to give it a go. See if it'll go back over and make it a little bit whiter. So it does actually get a bit whiter when it dries. Yeah, it's getting whiter. So I'll just bring in my black stripes here. Let's just blast this one off. So what I'm just going to do is, what I always do is, I always pop them under my Eureka to try and flatten them out a bit whilst we're working. There we go. So let's move on to the next stage. So we have two toppers, two backgrounds. Envelopes. So let's make some lovely envelopes. So I have the black coordinating envelope, which comes with my black top folding note cards. And I have my white one which comes with the white ones. These are such good, good quality. You know you're dealing with a lovely card when you've got a quality envelope, don't you? So let's be a little bit creative with these and let's make them coordinate a little bit. So just have a little slip of this before it goes cold. Let's move it out of the way. It's gone cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat emboss onto this one. So now shall we heat emboss in white or shall we use our white ink pad? Let's go with a white ink pad, hey, because I, I do feel we've done quite a lot of heat embossing and we've not tried this one. And if it goes a mess, you know not to do it at home. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. So let's do white and see how it comes out. So I want to create an embellishment on the front of this envelope so you know it's not going to be a bill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a creeper. So I'm going to pop that one there. And then hopefully we'll be able to sort of like arch the design. Let's make sure I don't catch my hinge. Just move up. There we go. Look at that. fits perfectly. And then you can still write your details in here and you can still put your lovely um, postage stamps up here. So let's see how it turns out, hey, in white. This will be interesting. Oh, without pulling my envelope up. Straighten that off. Make sure it's straight. There we go, let's just make sure. There we go, so let's try it in white. Hopefully it'll look pretty, but we'll see. Even if we get a, a sort of shadow effect, I think that'll still be quite pretty, don't you? Let's see. I'll try it one more time, but I don't think the ink pad has the pigment really I need to get what I'm trying to achieve. I'll try one more time. If not, we're going to have to heat emboss it. It's getting there, but I have a funny feeling I'm going to have to stamp it nine million times. So I'm not going to go with that. We tried it. It didn't work. What we're going to do to make it work, we're going to heat emboss it. So I'm going to swap the ink pad out for my embossing ink pad. Sticky ink pad. Oh, 
not such a shame that white ink pad didn't work. I thought it would be really cool. Let me know if anybody's got a white ink pad that shows. I'm just going to ink it one more time just to make sure we've got all that lovely detail. If you can, yeah, you just catch the design there in the light. Come see it. There we go. So you can see now. Hopefully, if things go to plan, we'll be able to make this envelope just as beautiful as the card that's going to be inside. So, grab my white embossing powder here. all covered best you can and because I didn't use my anti-static bag which I couldn't because we'd experimented with that white hadn't we first I'm just going to have to take my brush and just get rid of all those loose flecks that are trying to float around can we see here just in the design so I'm just going to get my little brush and I'm just going to get rid of all those ones that are hanging around so make sure when you get rid of all the loose ones you use a dry brush and then you can just knock them off It's always good to tidy up your design. It does look prettier if you just take that extra time to tidy it up a little bit. Let's just get rid of you. I think we'll just go with that one. You see that there? So that's going to look really pretty when you pop your address. You'd have to wipe right on in a white gel pen or matte and layer. A lovely piece of die cut white from maybe your postage stamp collection stick it in the center there that would look absolutely lovely so let's heat set this one so your envelopes are um, i think they're about 180 gsm so you just have to be mindful with your heat gun that these will warp a lot quicker than your traditional card so as always put your heat gun on take it off and do it in stages I'm just getting it hot first. So as soon as the powder starts to change, I'm blasting it on, taking it off, giving the card time to recover. They have like some beautiful, sorry, oops, sorry Nathan, that's my fault, some beautiful white sort of design on the front of your envelope there, which is really, really pretty, isn't it? Right, so that's that one. So that's our black envelope is that one, so let's set that aside. So let's bring in our white envelope, and this time, in keeping with the other card theme, we are going to do the watercolour, but again, you just need to be mindful that the cards that the sorry and I'm just going to move my image further in now just need to be mindful that the envelopes are thinner than your cardstock so you will not be able to oversaturate so just be mindful of that oh look what I've just done there that'll have to be covered now won't it right, just one second Yeah, I'll have to cover that one. Just looking to see if I've got a spare envelope that I can swap because that will frustrate me, as you all know. Here we go. Let's, oh, let's swap it out. I'll use that one for a painting project where I can cover it. So there we go. Let's make sure it's clean. 
So again, same colours, keep in theme, keep your card in theme if you can. So we went with the coral and we had a little bit of yellow and the green, didn't we? So let's keep in theme. So the coral all over the head of the flower. And then the green. Now you could stamp direct without spritzing, but I, I do like the texture and the sort of um, loose look you get. So I'm going to do spray, but I'm not going to oversaturate simply because I don't want my envelope to pill. So the grey the gray ink pad, whoever this question is, is the grey flannel memento. That's what I used for the um, first one I did. And what was the white ink pad? For the swipes, I did this one. So pigment ink pad, glacier white and memento flannel pill. Grey flannel. Just bear in mind this one didn't show on the on the envelope, but it did show on the black card when we did the swiping technique. So pros and cons really. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a spray. Nothing much. And we're just going to put a lovely watercolour flower on the front of our envelope here. already looks pretty doesn't it without without doing anything to it let's add some yellow so it's in keeping with our card again a little spritz nothing much And we've got a two-tone rose. There we go. So really, really pretty. So let's set this one aside. Nice, clean. And this is a thick envelope. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm super excited about this one. So let's set this aside. And let's start putting everything together. So let's have a look at our background. So it's actually come out not too bad with the swipes. I quite like that, I have to say. I do like the sporadic, loose look, if I'm honest. And then we've got our nice stripes on there too, which is quite a loose finish too. So let's put our cards together. So where do we start? Let's do our black one first. So I've got the black top folding note card. And I have a mat and layer, which is white. Can we see that there? So let's pop this one together. I'm just going to use my tape pen for speed. Now I'm thinking... Let me just have a look at this here. I'm going to ditch the white panel. But you can do a white panel if you want to. So I've stuck that flat onto this card here. So I did have a matte and layer, but I've decided to get rid of that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our lovely panel here. But what we're going to do is, so we've got this sporadic end here on the side. Can we see that there? I'm going to take this part of my design right to the very edge of my card, or at least to the end of those stripes. Now, if you're not a fan of the sporadicness, is that a word, of um, this side, then push it over and have the clean side. Does that make sense? Or you can pop it in the centre. It's entirely up to you. So let's pop some pads on this one first. Right, so I always use, uh, if I decorate the envelope, I always use the Distress Glaze from Ranger. And basically it's like a lip balm in a little jar. I get asked this often, you think I'd bring it in, wouldn't you? And it's like, it's a bit like Vaseline, but it dries. And it protects, so if the postman's walking around with your decorated envelope in the rain, it doesn't, it doesn't um, bleed your images or anything like that. It's called Distress Glaze. So I hope that helps. So I'm going to go this side because I actually like this... Um, See, right to that side or in a bit? I'm going to go right to the side because it's different. But you can experiment at home, can't you? And then what I did um, was I did a congratulations and I did a smile. 
So, and I did them extended so we could maybe make a banner of some form. So let's do the congratulations on this one. So I'm just going to cut off here and I'll make a little banner. Can we see that there? So you can pop it in your design, halfway across your design. Let's make it a little bit shorter. Cut that bit off and make it a bit shorter because it's going to encroach onto the black and you're not going to see it. So let's just make it slightly shorter. But again, it's a piece of card. If you do it and you don't like it, swap it out for something else. And then I'm going to pop this right to the very edge so you get this lovely banner. Can we see that there? Shall we go? Let's go flat with this one. Oh, welcome back, Hilary. It's lovely to see you. Or hear from you, should I say. <laughs> like so and then we could pop some sequins around we will come back to that one so um, let's just set that one aside that is very different card and I'll show you it with its envelope too so that's that one so let's just tidy up a little bit let's bring in our next one so we have got a matte and layer for this black stripe here hopefully yeah if I've cut it straight <laughs> not like my other panel so let's stick this one flat onto this black mat and layer. So I'll just pop this one up. Sorry for the head. So you can see now, even though those lines are not very straight, which is purposely done because I like the sporadicness of it, as soon as you mount it onto that black piece, it sort of frames it, doesn't it? It sort of brings it together, even though it is quite random. So we've got that, and then we just grab our card. So you can see now how the card is going to come together. So I think we'll just go flat with this one too. this one on here like so and again how again it looks different again as soon as you pop it on its white card there and then this one will pop pads behind you know our topper And you can decide where you're going to pop it up, down in the center. I'm going to go across to the side again. And then we're going to create our lovely banner. So let's just shorten it down a little bit. And I think what we'll do is we'll push it over the edge like so. And then we'll just grab our sparkle pen. Now, <laughs> this panel was meant to be the same size as this panel. And it would have looked awfully better if it had been the size of this panel because the stripes wouldn't have been as on show as much. So make sure you do your panels the same size. So let's just add some sparkle. Mm. 
I'm not adding too much, I just want it to be a suggestion. Just pull that colour through a little bit. And then when that shininess dries back, you'll just end up with clear, lovely sparkle on those lovely petals and leaves. And then shall we just add a few sequins, because I think we've got a little bit of time. Oh, did you see that? What a catch. So Joyce, maybe not the place to ask, but I'm looking for some magnetic sheeting with self sticks to the wall. Don't suppose anyone, can anybody help Joyce there guys? Um, I can't help you Joyce, I don't use that um, sort of thing, but somebody on here may be able to help. So let's get some sparkles on here. So... tiny bit of glue and I'm going for the clear ones as always because that's all I know what to do <laughs> so if you're looking at them thinking I love them but you know I'm not I'm not a fan of the background you can change your background why not do the same pattern in the background maybe he emboss the pattern in the background if you want to there's so many ways to chop it up and change it and it is sometimes now nice to be a little bit creative and do your own background maybe not the same as they're unique, aren't they? They're not going to be the same as anybody else's. And again, you're picking up that brush and you, it's encouraging you to try something new. So I'm all for it. So I'm just popping three on today. I'd have, I, I, love, I thought I was going to love this one the best, but because my panel's too small, I love this one the best. But I know that if I'd have done the panel bigger on this one, I would have loved this one the best. <laughs> That's a right riddle, isn't it? <laughs> so you can experiment at home. Absolutely. And I always get to see what lovely makes you all do anyway, which is super cool. So let's just grab the envelope. So let's show the card. So this is the black and grey white one. Like so there. And then you get your coordinating envelope. See that there, sorry. So let's just show us, mind you, my um, sequins are wet so they will just fall off. So you get your coordinating envelope and then you get open it and you get this beautiful card. So that's that one. And then you have the watercolory one with the nice pretty stripes in the background, panel being bigger, more pudding. And then you get your lovely coordinating envelope. You could actually do one which sort of like matches when you put the seal down. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? So two different cards two totally different colour waves imagine getting those through the post you'd be happy with those wouldn't you I certainly would I'd be like whoa this is not a bill these are fantastic so let's have a look I'm going to try the pink flowers with pink strap yes Anne absolutely show us your pictures in the um, Eureka fan page so if you've not heard of our Eureka fan page, it's a fabulous place to visit. The ladies in there are very inspirational, including the fabulous design team who will look after the group there for you and will look after you at home. So, um, and all you need to do is ask to join and the lovely uh, administrators on there, the design team will accept you into the group and then you will not get any housework done, unfortunately. Absolutely. You met so all of the metallic paints, your sparkle pens, your watercolour pens, your watercolour palettes, your distress inks, there are so many things that you will already have in your stash at home. You don't need to go hunting and buying, specifically what I've used in studio today. You will have a lot of it. And that's the great thing about this studio. We do love you to buy our products, but please don't worry if you don't have them. It's, it's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a must, it's not a need. We've been, some of you have been crafting 20, 30 years and probably have a shop yourselves in your own homes. So if we can dig that stuff out and play with it, you probably find it's dried out and you need to bin it, which then creates more space for you to buy other new fabulous things. So I hope you've enjoyed that one. I hope you've enjoyed that one. And I'm back with you tomorrow at three o'clock. 
and I will um, give you go through the list again to let you know what's coming over the next exciting week. I am so excited. Tomorrow I get my hair done, which means I'll have my fringe back. So I'll have a fringe. So new, new hair, new me tomorrow. Exciting. All the sparklies will be gone. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely afternoon. And I'll see you all tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Take care, guys. See you all later. Bye.